Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening everyone. How are you doing? Fine, thank you. Welcome to the Plasma Ability Academy Week 1. Yeah, we already have a week 1 for this. Very quick, right? So, let's get into it. American City Skill Issues, that's me, versus the Michigan Muse. Let's look at the MU. So, real quickly, um... Oh yeah, before I should say anything. So, I'm actually recording this before the fight, before the fight happens. You will be seeing me talk about the fight right after it happens because I don't want to do it live, I just realized because it could disrupt my concentration. So you're going to be hearing me talking about the matchup and my team before the fight and you're going to be hearing me talk about the actual fight itself after the fight happens and then I'm going to upload it for everyone to see. So yeah. And also, please let me know if the music in the background is too loud. I'm also trying to... I also realized that my previous videos were kind of wet because they didn't have any music. And I want that to change. So, enjoy the synthwave. And if you like it, let me know. If you don't like it, let me know so that I can improve these videos for all of you crazy Rai size out there. So, without further ado, the matchup. So, Asher has a very interesting draft, right? We have Zygarde, Enamorous Incarnate, Heatran, Mama Swine, Starmie, Makalola, Archeops, and Three Shitters. So, what's interesting about what to stand out about this MU is that Archeops is kind of a threat because I don't have a steel and my flying resist is Lantern, who has piss poor defense. Archeops is going to be a very, very, very difficult mod to switch into. Like, MG Magic Guard Head Smash Brave Bird is just so free in this MU. And my Fist Death Mons, like Lander's Therian and Tapu Fini, or the the bulkiest on the fis physical side rather, are um, they don't they don't exactly take those moves too well, especially if um, Archeops is Life or Magic Guard Head Smash. It's going to deal a lot of damage. So we're going to have to be creative. We're going to be have we're going to have to be super offensive for us to beat this Archeops. On top of that, there's some scary mons like Zygarde, which can be fat setup, but I have a lot of guys with ice coverage and can run Earth Eater for it. There's also Enamorous, who's very scary, can run mixed sets with Aerolate, Body Slam, Facade, or just its standard Sheer Force. Uh, Sheer Force, um, what do you call it? Sheer Force Life Orb set. So Earth Eater Sloking will be nice for that probably because Earth Power is all it has to hit Sloking if it's Sheer Force Life Orb. Heatran is also quite scary because it can be um, Desolate Land for the, the double water types with, with a strong fire move and also Solar Beam as coverage. It can also be uh, it can also be Earth Eater so that it can switch into Landorus or into its Earthquakes at least. Yeah, Heatran is. Uh, there, there's also a possibility he might be Magic Guard Life Orb with Steel Beam and other attacks, which can be scary as well. So we'll have to plan for that as well. Makalola is just an annoying Spidef pivot. It can knock, but I don't think I'm too scared of it because I have some very hard physically hitting guys like Infernape, Landers, and Weavile, who I don't, who I think hit Mok pretty hard. Starmie, Starmie is uh, you know kind of there. I'm not too scared of it. Same for Mamswine. Scarf can be a bit scary, but I think various Earth Eater guys like Earth Eater Lantern can eat, eat a lot from it. If it's Scarf, um, Regenerator Tapu Fini can probably eat a lot from it as well. And we also have stuff like Infernape to revenge it if it's locked into an Ice move. Slow King to probably come in if it's a Scarf Earthquake, so on and so forth. So let's go look at the team. Hold on, my laptop started making a bit of my apologies. I just have to get my charger. Even laptops deserve. I, I don't know where that's going, but. Oh, sorry. Okay, so on to the matchup. The team. The team. The team. Uh, all right. Sorry if you heard an abrupt cut there. I just had to cut some stuff out because um something on my laptop came up and I had to check it out. But yeah, without further ado, the team. So first here we have Landry's Therian with the eject pack, the ability refrigerate, and a, a relatively standard or not really relatively standard um a weird EV set right. I wanted to make it bulky so it can eat hits or switch in. In um switch in to stuff like 
switch into stuff like Mock probably. It can switch into stuff like it can switch into stuff like Zygarde and deal a super powerful hit with Return. And I also wanted it to eat. Um, I believe I wanted it to eat some hits from. Hold on, let me check the MU again. Yeah, I think I wanted it to eat some hits from Enamors as well. That's why I have this book, so it can eat um, an Aerolite. Facade that's flame war boosted while also eating one sheer force boosted moonblast. And I also think I also think it eats one heat ran one offensive heat ran hit, probably um probably a, a magma storm in the sun it can eat. Yeah. I think it can also eat a head smash from Archeops, yeah, that's also pretty important. If it's life or boosted, I'm not sure, but it's not our main answer to Archeops, so so uh, it's not our main answer to Archeop, so I think I'm fine with e it eating just a scarf, a scarf head smash. So Stealth Rock here is for it to chip the likes of Enamorous and Heatran, while also sp scouting the sets and items probably of stuff like Enamorous if it's Magic Guard, or scouting stuff like Makalola if it's Regenerator, and if it's you know if it's Force Switch Out and such. I want to see who is who has the Regenerator ability here. And maybe if Archeops is at Magic Guard for some reason, I want rocks up so it can chip. Yeah, so standard stealth rock, standard stealth rock stuff. I also brought Earthquake here just as a spammable neutral stab versus everyone. Uh, a spammable. Because if Heatran is an offensive ability like Desolate Land, Earthquake might be nice. And if. Um, if Makalola is. Not Earth Eater because you know he might not even use Makalola as the landers check since you know Aerolite landers just fucks it up anyway. And Earthquake just deals you know good damage to everyone. I wanted to keep it. Superpower is there just in case um Heatran. Heatran is Earth Eater. Heatran and Makalola are Earth Eater. Superpower eject back allows me to fire off a powerful superpower off of a 48 attack adamant nature. Uh, Adamant Nature Landers, and this allows me to get some momentum while dealing some chip. Return is there because um, Zygarde can be quite scary, and I want Landers to deal super duper good damage to it. Return actually one hit KO Zygarde, I think. Um, if it's if it's Impish with like sixteen thirty six fist buck, Return straight up just smokes it, and I think Return is just a very good move here. It hits Archeops and it hits Archeops and Enamors super effectively while also dealing pretty good damage to Muck. Landers Therian will be an important an important um, pseudo breaker I guess and maybe sort of pivot here in this MU. Next we have the main breaker Revile. So the set is relatively standard. It has 176 speed to outpace Starmie. It has 232 attack because you know I want it to it's the breaker. 100 defense however is the main thing I want to talk about here. It's there so that it eats one adamant pixelate e speed from Zygarde. I'm not worried about banded Zygarde at all because it just sounds really weird into the into um, an, an Earth Eater MU. But you know, if it is banded, we have a lot of fist walls that we'll talk about on, later on that can deal with that. So Weevil here is a relatively standard set in a choice band with Technician and beat up because that deals a lot of damage with Technician every... Uh, it deals a lot of damage with Technician. It's a pretty free mid-ground to everyone with the resist only being Makalola and the Namors who don't have particularly fantastic physical defense. Ice Shard is here as a spammable priority move that's boosted by Technician as well for the likes of Scarf Enamorous for the likes of Archeops in case that's Scarf as well. For a boosted Zygar that doesn't have E-Speed, that would be nice as well. That would be nice as well, yes. Triple Axel is here as Weavile's strongest stab because the resist is Heatran and uh, the resist are Heatran and Starmie. Starmie just dies to any dark move. Actually, I think it even gets to, to hit KO'd by Triple Axel. Like, Triple Axel is, extre is extremely powerful choice ban. And Heatran, if it comes in on Triple Axel, that's why I have my fourth move, Knock Off. Knock Off is just gonna deal a lot of damage to everyone as well with the Choice Band and also remove items that might help them a lot. It can remove Heatran's maybe, I don't know, Air Balloon. It can remove its Specs if it's that. If it, it can remove its Lefties. If Makalola is Assault Vest or Lefties, it can remove that as well. It's just a very nice spammable mid-ground. We we'll, we're looking forward to you in this match, don't disappoint. 
You'll notice as well, all of these all of these EV sets have one uh, have one EV in a particular stat I'm not using. It's because we are playing the national decks unrestricted tier that I think requires you to have 510 EVs for some reason. So yeah, that's pretty much the only explanation for that. Next, we have my second physical breaker. If Weavile can do the job because of Heatran, we have the Sword of Ruin Infernape. Infernape, if you look here, doesn't have too many good resists. The only true resist to both of its stabs is Stormy, who is extremely frail and gets chunked hard by Sword of Ruin U-Turn. Even the likes of Black Belt boosted close combats deal a lot to it. There's not really much to explain about Infernape. Um, I just want it as a breaker with Black Belt boosted close combats being extremely, extremely free into this MU. I, I think they even two hit came enamors, which is really funny. And Flare Bits is a, is a nice complementary stab here with close combat. Match Mac Punch is here to revenge the likes of Zygarde in a, in a pinch, while also probably revenging a Scarf Heatran if he brings that, and also being nice for Archeops if it gets chipped. Black Belt boosted sort of free Match Punch will do a pretty notable chunk. Infernape, we're looking forward to you. Here is the here is the mon I'm pretty proud of in this space because um, I cooked a lot with this. So what you'll notice is there's a double ground type. A double ground type. Uh, it's double ground type team with Zygarde and with Zygarde and Mamoswine. So Earth Eater is very, very good here. Uh, so with Ice Beam, it can two-hit KO Zygarde. With Scald, it can fish for burns while also dealing super effective damage to Mamoswine and resisting both Mamoswine stabs. It can also come in on the likes of Heatran if it's that. And you know, in case it's Desolate Land, I just Volt Switch all of that. I think I can eat, I can eat, I can eat offensive Solar Beams relatively well as well with the Assault Vest and 252 Spidef. The Assault Vest and 252 Spidef you, um, will help me eat. Moonblast, Sheer Force boosted Moonblasts from Enamorous, whether it's um, Modest or Timid. It also helps me eat yeah, Heatran hits and allows me to deal good damage back with Volt Switch or Fish for Paras with Discharge. You know, gaining momentum and Fishing for Paras is very nice and very annoying to play around. Sco and you'll notice I have Physical Defense here. This is actually my main Enamorous switch in. If Enamorous is Aerolate is Aerolate, um, Aerolate Facade. This 208 defense and 48 HP will allow me to come in on f um, on Aerolate Facade Enamorous and, you know, deal good damage to it. If it's... The main reason I'm talking about Aerolate and not other abilities like um, Pixelate is because Pixelate, I think, uh, isn't as effective as a mid-ground here because, um, for one, I have... For one, I have Slow King Galar who comes into it really well. Hmm. Actually, come to think of it. Nah, actually, I think I know why I, I selected that. Because I think flying, flying moves are generally more spammable here and scarier. But uh, spammable here and scarier mainly because Lantern is the switch into the flying move and it doesn't have any recovery outside of... Regenerator, and if it's Regenerator, then it's not Earth Eater, meaning, you know, I don't have um, too many. I don't switch into Earth Power for one from Enamorous, and the Earth, the Ground guys might be scary. And if it's Pixelate, you know, we also eat a we also eat a facade in a in a pinch with a 208 defense. And you know, if it's that, we have Sloking Galar to switch into, which we'll get in later. What you'll notice as well, and I want to talk about. Is that when EVing Pokemon like Lantern, who have a significantly higher HP stat compared to defense and special defense, like I think it has 100 something uh, HP compared to its 56 Fist Def and 76 Speed Def, you gain more, you are able to eat hits a lot easier if you invest in the significantly lower stat, especially if it's in defense and special defense. I can't explain the full mathematics, but that's more or less how the principle goes. So Lantern, I can't wait to be using you. Now we have Sloking Galar, my other Fist Def, uh, Fist Def Mon here. It's Earth Eater also to deal with the likes of Mammoth Swine if it's Scarf. Even Band Hits, I guess, are nice to switch into. Uh, switch into. That's why I also have a Citrus Berry so that I can eat an Icicle Crash in a pinch. But I'm actually sort of thinking of changing Citrus Berry because I don't think I quite... I don't think it's quite effective, but 
we'll get into that, into that later. Other items I'm considering are um, Black Sludge, which can be nice for some passive recovery. And yeah, I think Black Sludge is pretty much the only other item I'm considering. So Ice Beam is there to deal good damage to uh, Zygarde. Sludge Bomb is there to fish for poisons and deal with Enamorous. Chill Reception is there to both boost Weavile's defense, which is going to be very nice in dealing with um, Pixelate Zygarde. With the Snow Up, my Weavile will be able to eat a plus one Pixelate from or Pixelate E Speed from Adamant Zygarde. Slack off, you know, just a healing move. Yeah, Fist Death to because it's there for Zygarde and Mamoswine. Sloking Galar, you know, I can't wait to use you as well. Now for our last Pokemon, this is what I intend to use to deal with Archeops. So it's physical, it's um, also a maximum physical defense set with a bold nature. Um, I have a regenerator with the eject button because Archeops is going to definitely to hit KO this thing. If it's um, if it's Life Orb, it's definitely going to get to hit KO'd. And I think even the Scarf sets have a chance to hit KO Feeny. Archeops is just that that crazy dude. It's a Archeops with an ability is just really crazy. But yeah. Uh, we have to inject Bunton and Regenerator here because I wanted Axis Pseudo Pivot to come into Archeops and then with the damage Finny receives from Archeops, I'll be able to tell what item it is, what ability it probably is, and uh, what ability it probably is, yeah. And come into either Weav uh, come into Weaval to deal a big knockoff or a big triple axle depending on the team that comes and the situation on and how the battle is. You know when Weavile comes in. Scald is here to fish for burns to deal good damage to Heatran if it's not desolate land. Moonblast is here for the likes of Zygarde and it's also just a good mid ground into everybody except Heatran. Nature's Madness is here just in case Heatran is desolate land because if it's desolate land Heatran, Feeny straight up can't touch it. So I want Nature's Madness to deal maximum damage to everyone no matter what the set is. And I have Defog here because um with Weavile and all my guys relying on their bulk and not having and maybe finding turns for recovery for them is quite tricky or just non-existent in the case of Lantern, I want Defog to remove rocks. But yeah, Fee TLDR is just here for Archeops and I guess the other physical mons I'm worried about in a pinch. It should be able to eat it's my switch into Icicle Crash Mamu, which is why I'm also I'm also planning to use Eject Button as a pivot so that it can switch into Infernape, who can deal a very, very meaty hit once um, it switches out. And yeah, so that's the whole team. Let's see how the match goes, and I'll get back to you once the match is finished. See you all there, guys. Alright, so hello everyone. We're finally here at the match. So it happened a few days ago, and let's see how it went. So first of all, the... Six. So it's pretty much expected with only seven viable mons in the draft. I think this is kind of expected. What is what really makes me happy though is that there's no Starmie, so Landers lead is really free, and Infernape like Infernape doesn't have any switch ins at all. I mean, not that Starmie was one, but it was probably it was the only thing deterring Infernape from clicking its stabs for free. So um, let's see how it goes. Like I said earlier, since there's no Starmie, we're not really afraid of. Ooh, we're not really afraid of that lead, so we can lead with Landorus. If he leads Mamo, we can just switch to Tapu Fini at worst. And I don't think Zygarde's going to be refrigerated here. And you know, if it does lead, if he, he does lead Zygarde, I think worst case we can just go to Tapu Fini, who has the eject button for so we can get some early momentum if needed. A few notes, by the way. I actually did change a few things on the paste. First, Infernape doesn't have U-turn anymore because I figured Earthquake was nice for killing Heatran and Muck without having to lower Infernape's defense. And it also hits Starmie pretty nicely since Sword of Ruin boosted Earthquakes are neutral. I also made Lander's Theory and um, a Refrigerate Assault Best Set. And a Refrigerate Assault Best Set. And... The reason I did this is because I wanted it to eat hits from Heatran and, you know, Enamorous, and also just being an annoying pivot with U-Turn. It's not a switch into those Pokemon, obviously, because even within the Salt Vest, Desolate Land boosted Fire Blast, for example, might do a lot, and Sheer Force Moonblast will also do a lot. 
But I like it. I like it so it can at least trade with strong offensive moves and then hit them back really hard with either Earthquake for Heatran and Ritter Refrigerate Return for Enamorous. I really like Landorus here because Re Refrigerate Return is such a free click with the only resist being Heatran who has to worry about Earthquake. So yeah, the Archaeops is scary, you know, like I said. So we'll just have to be weary about that. But we have sufficient Revengers in Weavile and, you know, the Fist stuff guys. So should be manageable. Let's see how it goes. Right off the start, we have Landorus and then... Hold on, sorry, it's a bit fast. So, right, right at the start, we lead with Landorus, and he leads Heatran. So we don't know this thing's ability yet, but given it's a lead, it's probably. I had I had the suspicion that it was probably Earth Eater, which is why I click Superpower here. But he switches out, so that means he's probably not an. A ground immunity ability, so that's good to note. So it means Earthquake is free to click on it. He went to the Zygarde, probably because it's the best thing that can, you know, eat an Earthquake, supposedly. That isn't an Amorous or Archaeops. Superpower deals 33. So perhaps it's a relatively bulky Zygarde, because Superpower from a non stab, uh, from a non stab attacker with only 168 attack EVs. Um, that's actually a pretty good amount considering it's not stab and Zygarde is pretty bulky on the defensive side. So I could safely say that, that it's probably offensive with a decent amount of bulk or it's just fully offensive. So yeah, and then it reveals to be poison heal. So it could be some sort of subset, some sub coil set. Or it, I think I'm 100%. I'm at this point. I was 100% or 99% sure it was a setup set, probably coil. But at least it's not pixelate, which pixelate or refrigerate meaning. Landers can probably come into it for free later on if we did, and Weevil doesn't need to worry about pixelate extreme speeds and such. Yeah, that's good to note. So clicks coil and then we just click a free return here because we aren't really scared of anything since it's not banded not adaptability or anything return does a hefty chunk does 58 and then we kill Zygarde I'd rather the reason I sacrificed all the health on Lando is because um, I wanted to preserve Tapu Fini's eject button for Archaeos because that gets nasty and on top of that, I don't think I really needed Landers' HP. At, like, at that game, I didn't really think Landers' HP was that important at the, at the moment compared to preserving, say, Tapu Fini's eject button and having to worry about, like, a plus one outrage for La Lantern and Sloking Galar. That would have been pretty bad. But in hindsight... Nah, okay, I think I'm still gonna stick to that play. Mainly because, yeah, I, s I wanted to keep Tapu Fini relatively healthy for Archaeops so that we could safely scout its item. And because I didn't want either Slowking or Lantern to eat a plus one outrage, it would have been pretty bad. Especially on Lantern because we need that thing to check Heatran and Mamoswine. We know Heatran isn't Mold Breaker or Desolate Land, by the way, which is very good. Meaning we don't have to worry about Sun Boosted Fire moves and One Turn Solar Beams for Lantern. So Lantern should just come into it really freely. And yeah, okay, so we killed the Zygarde here, which is very nice. That's one big threat off the way. Archaeops comes in, you know, because Head Sash is a free click. We send in Tapu Fini to get the eject button momentum and scout its item. Based on this damage, it is not Scarf, straight up. And because it didn't take any. It didn't take any recoil, Head Smash is. It's 100% magic guard, no recoil, and it did that much. Only life orb can, or only life orb or hard zone can reach this much damage. And because like, because he didn't take any recoil, it definitely had to be life orb. I don't know why you'd be hard stone on, <laughs> on a magic guard set. So it's a set we expected here. We go out into Weevil because we know it's not scarf. So beat up is a very 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 free free click here because Argy up to dice with it. Enamorous and Mock probably take a lot from it, so does Heatran. 
and mammal swine that's my mindset so we just click beat up for free here then he sends in mammal swine and reveals tablets of ruin I get a crit there which probably didn't matter but look at how little this thing is taking it didn't or without the crit it didn't even take 50 from a banded beat up technician weavile so based on that calc i think this is definitely a max defense mammal swine because like mammal swine's bulk isn't too impressive so even with tablets of ruin i'd imagine it shouldn't take that it shouldn't take that little if it's an offensive set so with this in mind, we know it's a defensive Mammoth Swine, meaning Lantern, Sloking Galar, and Tabu Fini should be able to handle this thing really well. We send in our dedicated switch in Lantern, who has Earth Eater, and he eats that Earthquake up. This Mammoth Swine doesn't want to stay in here for sure, because, um, because you know, it, has, it can't really do anything versus Lantern other than knock or set up rocks, but that means risking losing Mammoth Swine to Scald, which... Honestly, I don't think it's the worst wor worst trade for him because, like, what is Mam Ma what is Mam's Swine really doing at this point, right? Other than revenging Landrius with Ice Shard, which the two Flyers could have probably done, or Heatran if it's Scarf, I guess. So, I think I sh what I should have done was click Scald here, probably because, um, wait, did I click Scald here? Okay, yeah, good. I click Scald here. Because, um, I think, or at least now, and I think it's the same mindset I had before. Um, Mammoth Swine didn't really have a reason to be preserved, so I didn't want it to just get rocks up for free while I click a Volt Switch predicting, like, a Water Absorb Heatran or something. So I just click Scald because it, you know, safest move at that point, and we can fish for a burn on something like Makalula or Salt Vest. This does feel like an Assault Vest set. Assault Vest region, probably, if I had to guess. 18 with Gunk Shot, so it's pro it's definitely not offensive. Not adaptability, that's for sure. I, did, I didn't I did click Earth... Uh, oh my god, sorry. I'm, I'm not used to these recordings after a while. Um, yeah, I don't click Earthquake here because obviously... While it, it, it should be... A relatively fair assumption that it's a regenerator set because of how little it took from Lantern. It's probably region vest, but we can't be too safe. So instead of clicking Earthquake here, I just, I think oh I should click Return. Why is that? Because it deals fair amounts of damage to Muck anyway. If it stays in, it's Earth Eater, and we at least chip it with a good uh, with a good um, refrigerate boosted Return. And on top of that, um, if he's not Earth Eater. He probably has to switch out to something like Archeops or Enamorous on a re- or he has to risk switching into them because he doesn't want anything eating an Earthquake. So I figured Return, Refrigerate Return would be the best mid-ground here. The only thing that would eat it really well are Mamo and Heatran. Mamo is probably taking a notable chunk still, and Heatran doesn't want to risk Earthquake because if, if Muck is switching out on this, then Heatran isn't going to switch in because, you know, they both died the same thing. So I click return here for a mid ground and Enamorous gets sent in. So that's one huge threat out of the way this Landers is going in. And since Lantern is at 24 and only outspeeding a muck, i or probably Heatran too, but I don't I think I could kill it with something else. I I um had sack Landers because you know didn't really need it anymore. We send in Weavile again, another free beat up here. And he just um, sac sacrificed Archeops because I, I suppose he didn't want anything else to eat like a triple axle or beat up. Like he didn't want... I think what he should have done personally was go into Muck because... Or, unless he's not regen, we don't know yet. But I click a beat up there because it's relatively free. Worst case scenario, he goes into Muck. Who resists the hit? Uh, worst case that happens, I can... You know, just go... I can just go probably... Lantern at worst? Or no, not Lantern. Huh, actually. Hmm. In hindsight, actually. I'm actually wondering what I could have done better there. Okay, let's analyze. So here, right, we kill Enamorous and we let go of Landers thinking, you know, nothing I can do anymore is really worth it. But if you look at my look at my remaining mons, without Landros, Mock is going to be particularly annoying to kill. 
I I, th I think at the time I had thought, oh, I have Infernape and it's physical, so it can definitely kill Muck. But it's definitely a risk considering, if, you know, Muck can probably eat one of its stabs or an earthquake, and then um, Infernape is at the risk of eating a gunk shot. So I think what I should have done here actually. Yeah, I know what I should have done here. I think sacking Tapu Fini was probably the play because it probably wasn't going to handle Heatran, and Lantern and Lantern and Sloking Galar probably could have handled Heatran better. Or these four, Weavile, Infernape, Lantern, and Sloking Galar, could have handled Heatran better than Tapu Fini because, for one, it could be water absorbed, and even so, like it could also be some offensive stuff like Magic Guard Steel Beam probably to do a lot. Since it's um, a Fist of Fini. And for Mammoth Swine, we also have these two to deal with that since it's a defensive set. Yeah, I think Tapu Fini was definitely the sack here. That's a misplay on my part. I should have sacked Tapu Fini there. But regardless, we click B top, we kill Archeops. That's the biggest threat in the matchup out of the way. I really, really hated that thing. It's so annoying to prep for. So glad it's gone. Heatran comes in. So, yeah, because I don't think beat up kills it since we're only at 5 Pokemon. So, you know, I switch out here thinking, you know, Heatran's scary. I go into Lantern, because AV, and then he reveals Steel Beam. So, yes, he is Magic Guard. A Magic Guard um, Steel Beam. I didn't really calc the damage because, like, I don't know, I don't think it was important if I knew i did at the time i didn't think it was important if i need just life orb or not but i think i should have done that so that i could identify if it is life orb because if it isn't life orb it's probably something like scar for a resist berry which would be important to know for the likes of infernape and weaval because we don't know if it's shuka we don't know if it's uh we don't have it's shuka we don't know if it's scarf we don't know if it's chapel so we we should probably or i should probably take note of that information next time you can't be too safe in matches like these you have to know all the calcs so you can find out all the info you can get so now to free switch in Ma steel beam does absolutely nothing to ab lantern i just click volt switch here because you know he's not sending in he's not sending mammoth swine it's also now we also know a few things after those few turns one he tra scald is free scald is free it always fishes for a burn on makalola and it hits heatran and mammoth swine for super effective damage so that's good we also realized that muck is regenerator since once it switched into lantern it was at 100 percent meaning that chip we did earlier is now gone so it's def so it is region best after all so i sent infernape here because it's the best thing that can kill muck earthquake you know say strong hit versus um versus everyone with the sword of doing boost we do a lot, but we don't kill. Unfortunately, that's going to be that's going to be very scary. Gunk shot misses. That's that's unfortunate, but I don't think it's really that game changing. Cause like, Infernape would definitely still be alive, and I don't think much priority would have revenged it. Cause like, I think a gunk shot into a poison wouldn't have killed after, or even after a gunk shot with a poison, I don't think Muck would have killed Shadow Sneak. So, Earthquake here does a lot, and we dodge a gunk shot. Earthquake is a free click there again. Muk Alola is thankfully gone. Now with Heatran and Mamoswine left, we straight up just went from here with either Lantern or with Lantern, yeah. So we find find out that's leftovers and we click close combat to kill it. And now with the Heatran left, I figured that because he didn't send in Heatran first, it's probably something slower than Infernape that died and dies to Infernape. In hindsight, I should have played it safe anyway and gone Lantern, knowing this thing can't touch Lantern at all. You know, it would have been nice for the plus one diff because it does reveal to be a Scarf um, Magic Guard set after all. Uh, live and learn. It's not the worst, but you know, if we want to preserve diff, differ uh, differential, that could be good to know for next time. So we send in Lantern and, you know, we wall Heatran and we just win the game from there after a few scalds. Yeah, that's the game. So as my first almost any ability game ever, I have to say that was pretty fun. Scouting for abilities was definitely fun. Playing around things was definitely fun. And prep, as stressful as it was, was definitely fun as well. The different sets you come up with. I definitely really am excited for future weeks to come. I did make a few misplays there. Um, with uh, not sacking Feeny earlier to Archeops and... 
yeah, with Nantlang Finito or Kiops earlier, and so on and so forth. But, you know, good first game, GG's to Asher. The Archeops was definitely scary, and he actually did make transactions. He's replacing the Starmie and the Mamoswine for a Don Dozo and Meowscarada, and honestly, I'm I'm happy we fought him week one because Meowscarada with my draft is really, 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 really not fun to fight. Like, I'm I'm anticipating what if I fight this guy in playoffs? I don't think I have a switch into Meowscarada at all. So yeah, let's hope that not. Let's hope that doesn't happen. I guess. But yeah, GG to Asher, and um, thank you all for thank you all for joining me again in today's video. And I'd like um, since I'm coming back to YouTube for the summer at least, and you know, going to AA the first time, I'd like to hear your thoughts and comments. How are my videos? How is my commentary? Is it helpful? Are there things I can improve on? I appreciate any and all feedback you guys can give me. Have a lovely day. Have a lovely week. Have a lovely summer, and uh. I don't know, have a good life, I guess. Bye.